I greet everyone in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I consider it an honor and privilege to be given this opportunity to speak the Word of God. The Word of God is very simple, and if we would appropriate just the simplicity of the gospel, our lives would be transformed and changed forever. Jesus Christ was very relational, not only to the adults, but also to the small children. There's an incident in the Bible that talks about how much Jesus puts his love and his attention to these small children. It comes from Mark chapter 10, verse 13 through 16. People were bringing small children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them and blessed them. That shows that Jesus is so loving to all, every single one of them. And the kingdom of God is an upside down kingdom. We cannot reason it with man's thinking. Man's thinking is always thinking of something very superior, very proud, very arrogant. God's kingdom is an upside down kingdom, which is right side up. And Jesus said a, a statement, for to such belong the kingdom of God. First of all, we have to understand what is, what is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God in the universal sense is that God reigns supremely. In the spiritual sense, it means that we are willing to give the Lordship over our lives to Him. So the kingdom of God means God reigns supremely. And in this small incident, it, see, it says that the people were wanting to have, to bring their children to have an encounter with Jesus. And the disciples rebuked them. Because, not because of anything else, but maybe Jesus was tired and he was very taxed in the ministry of doing so many things. Jesus became very indignant. That, be, that means he became very angry. And he made a profound statement. The statement was, unless you become like a small child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We talked about the kingdom of God being a spiritual one. In order for God to reign supreme, the willingness has to be there in our life to let him do that. And what, is, what are the characteristics of these small children or these little children? We see that they trust implicitly. That means without any reservations. They give over their um, concern of their life to their parent. And they're carefree. They're not troubled about many things on this earth or what they will eat or what, what should happen in their life but rather they are carefree knowing that their parent will take care of them. They're very persistent. They will ask till they get it. They keep asking and they don't quit and they continue to be uh, persistent in their asking till they receive what they want in their life. And the greatest thing is that they are, their humility their humility is their total dependence on their parent. That is where we as adults struggle. We don't want to be dependent, we want to be independent. And that total dependence is saying, I can't do anything without you. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Unless we get into that state of dependency, of trusting, we won't know the full extent of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, God wants us to give us joy, peace, hope, happiness in this life. But when we try to micromanage and don't allow to reign as supreme in our life, we cannot 
even get a glimpse of what this kingdom of God is. First of all, we have to be humble enough to say, Lord, I want you in my life. I want you to save me because I cannot save myself. The life that I want to live, I cannot live because I will fail all the time. I may be able in my own human effort, may, may conjure up enough courage and enough stamina to do something consistently, maybe in one area of my life. But to have that grace, that patience, that persistence, it is given by the Holy Spirit. It is given by the overcoming power of Jesus Christ. See, children, we need to learn a lot from children. They are so unbiased and unprejudiced in their life. Life teaches them to be prejudiced and biased. That is now, that's why Jesus took them and gave them a visual aid. He took them and placed his hands of blessing on them and blessed them and brought them to him. The utter dependency of a child, we have so much to learn from. And another caveat to this is that children did not ask to come into this world. It is the parents' responsibility to bring them into a, a saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give them avenues where they have a chance to hear about God. Permissive parenting will not do that. Apathetic parenting cannot do that. We are at a greater responsibility to lead these children to the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That responsibility is not only to the parent, but is also to the church. Whenever we see gaps that's happening, we recognize that these children need to hear about the love of God. The kingdom of God is something that the Lord wants every one of us to experience. And then, these children, in the literal sense, we are responsible for them in their life. This is the largest group in the world that are candidates for the kingdom of God. Oh, how we will be remiss if we do not take that call seriously upon our life. Spurgeon made a quote and it really struck my heart. He said this quote, we must not think a child cannot come to God unless he is like a man, but a man cannot come unto God until he is like a child. We must grow down until we become a child. Our arrogance cannot gain the kingdom of God. Our pride cannot gain the kingdom of God. If we think we are wise, we're not wise in the presence of an all-knowing and all-wise God. He knows what is best. But if we would lay aside our ego, if we would lay aside our pride and be carefree and have that utter humility, that dependence saying, God, I need you. I need you. And so that I can fully, fully experience the kingdom of God. And I pray this is a more of a somber type of a message. It is not a feel-good message because it questions our integrity of how we stand before an all-knowing God. If we would only surrender fully in His presence and become like these children, these innocent, carefree, just full of humility, implicit trust, God can then actually help us to understand the kingdom of God. Let us be like children. It's good to be like a child in the presence of an almighty God. And I pray that this will stretch you in such a way that you will surrender completely to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you.